Hi, everybody. My name is Alan. On behalf of the crew, I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Bridging Heaven and Earth. <laughs> this is really an unbelievable time for, for most of us on this planet. I mean, every, you know, we deal, you know, with bridging, with the shows, with, you know, being on YouTube and all over the, the planet. The shows are available in all the cities in the United States and England and all over that the shows are that we really deal with people all over the planet. And we don't know anybody who's not going through some level of change or trauma or transmuting or transforming growth around jobs or relationships, death, illness, you know, all the human things, money, uh, foreclosures, housing, just all the things that, that test a human soul. And we're all going through that. And, you know, tonight, we, you know, as most of you know, when we get together and we set up here at the, at the bridging facility, we, we end up doing two shows. We shoot two shows in one night. And usually we have two separate guests and, you know, that's it. And, you know, the, get, the shows are an hour, so people get a chance to really, you know, get a chance to really talk about and, and, and let people experience what they're their hunger is, what their intention is, what their love is, what their passion is, what their destiny is. And tonight we were preparing for two shows with two guests, and the first show was this beautiful show that we just finished a little while ago with Michael Tamora, and then we were supposed to have another guest, and then all of a sudden the other guest isn't here. And it was interesting because when we did the first show with Michael Tamora, who was doing this, this quiet healing, this healing without sound, this healing of... Um, of, of the, the peace vibration, that peaceful vibration, that vibration within inside ourselves that has no words attached to it. And it just felt rushed. It felt like somehow we, I don't know whether the videos were long, the opening was long, but that there needed more time for that. And, and it was like, okay. And, and Michael left. He went to, you know, he has other engagements all over the planet. He's flying here, flying there. And he left. And then all of a sudden, we're getting ready, and the second guest is not appearing. And so we call Michael and say, Michael, really, there was more for you to say. And Michael's coming back. So for the first time, we're having two shows right one after the other with the same guest. And it's really, it's really an honor. As most of you know, no one's appeared on the show, even before this double <laughs> taping situation as, as Michael has. And there's a reason for it because his gifts and his joy and his compassion are so apparent to anybody who watches. I mean, we get more comments about the Michael shows than all the 250 odd shows we've done. And it's because of, of that gift he has and that experience he's had since he's been very young. I mean, Michael's a master teacher, he's a life coach, he's a visionary, he's a healer, he's a clairvoyant, uh, he's a, a pioneer of spiritual healing and psychic development, and he, he's known as someone who wakens souls, who enlivens that recognition of, of what a human being really is. And he travels the planet doing that. And he has an award-winning book that again brings us into that through words, through vibration. It's called You Are the Answer. And Michael's committed to building a true spiritual community without walls. And, and here he's going to be. And here is the opportunity. And here is an opportunity for us. us. And I'm telling you, it happened by the grace of, of, the, of the Almighty. It happened by the, you know, it's interesting because I, I always say that the show gets the people on who are supposed to be on. And, you know, we've never done this before, but change is in the air. So we have to be prepared and we have to be ready. As Michael was ready when he got the call to come back, he just, he, I'm sure, I mean, I haven't spoken to him about it, but I'm sure he knew that, yeah, it's, there's more to say and there's more to say now and there's a reason that the other guest isn't here. And we have two beautiful uh, music videos. Uh, we have two beautiful art pieces. Uh, as most of you know, we're in the middle of this international healing art project that came as a vision. And the vision was to reach out to the world from this platform of Bridging's media and Bridging's shows and Bridging's YouTube and reach out to the world and say, anybody, any age, any skill level, 
produce a new original piece based on the theme Bridging Heaven and Earth, any size, any format, glass, whatever that intention, whatever that hunger, whatever that hunger to be creative, to collaborate, to, to be a part of a healing, an acupuncture for the planet, whatever manifests through you, we'll put them on the shows, we'll have art exhibits of them, and we will make them available to the world to, to be part of a collaboration, to be part of a healing. And tonight we have two beautiful pieces, and one came from, uh, it's a digital art piece uh, from Toronto, Canada, Renata Rat. Tajik, it's ancient prophecies, the Maya prophecy number one. You'll see it, it's beautiful, and I'll read something about it as well. And we also have uh, three uh, small pieces from Wa, who's a musician, who actually we're showing Wa videos tonight as well. I think you've seen him on Bridging before. She's an incredible musician from the LA area. So why don't you join me in a short meditation, then we'll have the first Wa video. And, uh, you know, Michael's back, and he's meant to be back, and he's here, and it's an opportunity for us all to share that connection, share that love, share that healing, share Michael's gifts that he's just so desirous and happy and joyous to share with the world. So join me in a short meditation. Thank you. So the first video we're going to show is Wa. It's two pieces. Is it love and Maya Deva? Is it love, Maya Deva, Wa? Enjoy. Namah Shivaya, 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 Namah Shivaya,
Hey everybody, welcome back. So that was a beautiful video from Wa, and we're going to show some more later. And the incredible piece you're seeing in between Michael and I is by Renata Rachiksik, and she's from Toronto, Canada. I think she was originally from somewhere else, but now she's living in Toronto, Canada. It's a piece of digital art. It's an archival print on watercolor paper, and it's ancient prophecies, the Mayan prophecy number one, and this is what uh, Renata says about this piece and doing this piece. This artwork was inspired by ancient Maya prophecy about the end of the grand evolutionary cycle of 26,000 years. The last day of this cycle is coming soon on December 21st, 2012 AD. The time we are now in has been called by various names, for example, the time of great purification, the end of this creation, the end of time as we know it, the shift of the ages. Some people say it will bring regeneration to the earth and a spiritual awakening to people who are ready. In any case, it is supposed to be the time of very important changes. So once again, if anybody's interested in being part of this healing, this acupuncture, Join us in this art project. Go to Heaven to Earth Art and you'll just see incredible things over and over. So inspiring, so empowering. So, Michael, welcome back Thank again you. very soon. <laughs> didn't get too far. No, you didn't. You made it to the, almost to the end of Santa Barbara. So, why don't you give a little, like, uh, you know, quick update what we talked about the show before about the quiet, about what we need to be the quiet, and then maybe we can do a little longer meditation in the second section, or a little quiet thing. Sure. So why don't you kind of... Well, we were talking about, you know, the difficulty people have in being quiet because it brings out so much. And as you were talking about this um, uh, artwork, well, first of all, uh, looking at the gallery on your website is superb. It's really amazing. Each piece is so healing just going through all the pieces it's healing and it's so important in these times and in the coming times you know how in schools so much the art and music funding goes first right it, it just disappears uh, even though there's a lot of money going into sports and things of that nature but it gets taken away from art but we're moving into a time where art is going to become so important and, and you're ahead of the curve in bringing all these artists from around the world together because we're going to need a lot of art in our homes, in the cities. Um, it's a way of balancing what's... With that loving intention. Exactly. With that loving root. Yeah, yeah it's going to be a major part of healing. And so as we quiet all the what's not balanced, all the conflicts come out. And this is why so many people don't want to go there. What's the only release that people have, uh, or at least they think, is go to a football game and just yell your heart out, you know? And root just, for your team. Yeah, root for your team. But it also creates a lot of competition and division of root for your team. As against, against as opposed. Uh, yes, right. and against the other team. So... Why can't we root for both teams? You know? <laughs> yeah, root for the beauty for the of the whole, sport. Yeah, then it would be a whole different experience. And, uh, and the other part would be just going to a concert, a rock concert or something, and really just dance and, and scream and everything. You get a lot of energy out, but you really don't get to 
what's conflicted within you. It's a temporary relief. And we've, for so many years, we've had the kind of medicine where you take medicine for temporary relief. But what happens after it runs out? You know, after the concert wears down, after the excitement of the football game wears out, you're back to work again, back to whatever's not working in your relationships again. And this is a time of, as she writes there, the great purification. What does purification mean? In when we go through a detoxing process, have you, you've done you know, no, fasting right, and the, right. it, you start to feel really good the first couple of hours. <laughs> and, but especially after the day or two, you're going to start having aches and pains, your headache, and you feel nauseous, and all kinds of things yeah, happen. Yeah, toxins are releasing. All releasing. If you know that's what's going on, then you look for it. You go, oh, yeah, this is normal. It's, it's what has to release. Maybe I'll drink more water, uh, rest more, and, and so forth. And we help. We support that purification process. And, and like we were saying earlier in the last show, we're celebrating it. Yay! You know, all these toxins I've been holding in my body is starting to come out. I, I get to release it, bless it, and it's, it's gone. And because you know after you go through that fast and purification, you're going to be cleaner. Your body's going to be cleaner. You're going to be healthier. You're going to have more energy. Well, the same thing is happening in a much deeper level than just the physical detoxification. It's a complete, full detoxification. This is purification. This, down into one's soul. And, and it may start on a more bodily level. Uh, people will feel that. Uh, the energy is stepping up. I think anyone who's even remotely sensitive is feeling this, what is all this energy? And I see so many people today uh, running around and they can't rest. Some of them are having a hard time sleeping at night. Uh, during the day, they find time to, you know, normally relax where they're not having to work. Uh, they don't have to do anything. And they go, oh, good. I, don't, I have a little window of time to relax. They sit down and then they jump up and start doing stuff. And if they stop for a moment, they'll recognize that they're doing things just to be doing things because they don't know what to do with themselves. All this energy is coming up. And what do you do? It's, it's kind of like a hyperactive kid and we're bouncing off the uh, floor, or walls. <laughs> we You're bounce. just bouncing around. And <laughs> we're bouncing around everywhere. And everywhere, <laughs> ceilings, floors. No, we're yeah. bouncing around. So sure. grounding is going to be tremendously important. Grounding, just like an electrical appliance, when you're ground the, uh, the third prong of the electrical appliance, when there's an extra surge of energy, electricity, it gets grounded off, and the appliance doesn't blow up. Well, some people, I, I hear over and over, uh, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed. I'm, you know, they're stressed out, they're overwhelmed, they're running around in circles not knowing what to do because I don't know what to do. And, and it's all this energy. Well, that energy actually, what's coming out is the toxic stuff, but the energy that's bringing it out is great energy. It's the energy of purification. It's, it's the energy of healing. And what's going to be so important for people to know is how do you manage that energy? Because the first thing that energy brings out is pain, fear, grief, and then anger and other things, resistance. Wow, all, the, all the really good stuff. <laughs> really? Yeah. Who doesn't look forward to those? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if your focus is on what's the negativity that's coming out of you, it's going to be miserable. It's just like more of it. And so then, especially people who are more aware and progressive, they might go, okay, uh, I need a healing. So they might go to a healer of some sort, acupuncturist or a spiritual healer or psychic reader or whatever, and, and they get more healing. But this energy is already healing them, and they get more healing, it's more stuff comes out. And so, so there's a temporary, uh, when right after they get the healing, they might feel better and go, oh, yeah, I, I think I can go on again. And a day or two later, it's all coming out again. Well, I thought I got a healing. I still need more work. It's, it's almost never ending. And so this is one of the things that 
we have to be aware of and, oh, okay, we're detoxifying. What am I detoxifying? Oh, I've been feeling so much fear. I just, I'm like a you know, jackrabbit jumping around and, and not knowing where to put my feet down. So then, can we be quiet for a moment, be grounded, and give ourselves a little breath and, and uh, oh, yeah, let's let this go. And as we start to let this go, more of this fear comes out because so much of it is in the world. I mean, there's so much fear oozing, <laughs> oozing in the world. So when a person is becoming more aware, when they've been practicing spiritual practices, they become more aware, more sensitized, one of the first things that happen is they become more aware of what's around them. And these days, there's so much fear. There's so much stress and so much of people either going on one side going, I'm overwhelmed, I'm overwhelmed, or other people going, I'm so exhausted. I, I'm just, it's another kind of overwhelm where, where they're kind of burnt out. And I, I don't know if I can go on like this. And it feels like you're just being bashed by the wave. You know how when you tumble in the wave and the next one comes and you can barely breathe in between the waves? Well, how do we get out from that being tumbled by the surf is first thing we have to do is let go. If we fight it, it's just going to slam us. The wave's stronger. But if we let go, then soon we'll float up. And we don't have to know which way is up. If we let go, we naturally float up. If we try to control it and, and try to get somewhere, then when we're really... I've been under water and pushed down by waves... If you try to find your way, you can't. You're literally lost in this uh, cyclone. And so you don't know which way is up. And some, I, I've had experiences where, where I'm trying to swim up, and I was actually swimming down. And I realized at that point, I have to totally let go. Then I floated up. Then there is a moment or two to breathe. <laughs> we, before we have, the next one. before the next wave comes but once you start to get into that rhythm you have a couple of breaths you're okay you're, you're not going to die you're, you're not going to drown next wave comes you just go under and then you come back up and you breathe again and this rhythm is what's happening right now the rhythm is getting faster more intense, where the wave action is coming faster. I, just the other day, I was going over, gee, how long did it used to take this type of energy step up to happen? Because I noticed it happened one day, and then a couple of days later, it happened again. Well, 10 years ago even, that kind of intensity of energy shift would happen once a year, once every two years. Before that, maybe once every five or ten years. And now it's almost on a regular daily type basis. And people are just going, oh, I'm drowning. Okay. So the first thing to do is, again, that connection from the tailbone area to the center of the earth. Because right by the tailbone is what we call the first chakra. It's a center of self-preservation. That is being challenged time and time again. Because... If we're trying to preserve ourselves, if we're trying to survive, well, who is trying to survive? Who are we trying to keep together? Uh, there's everyone across the board is having identity crisis <laughs> because their identity is being challenged. If we've been comfortable being a certain kind of a person or having, uh, being identified with your profession, I'm a doctor, I'm an artist, I'm a healer, I'm a teacher, whatever uh, we're comfortable with, all of a sudden we find that's being challenged. And it's not the true underlying healer or teacher or whomever we are, but it's the images we hold of what do I have to look like, what do I have to sound like, what do I have to do to uphold this image I have of being a doctor or being a teacher or being a carpenter or being a businessman or successful or whatever, or even being a mother. And all mothers naturally go through this. 
Uh, mothers go through this naturally when their children grow up. And at first, they, they're getting older, and they're able to be more and more independent. So as the child grows up, each mother and father too, but especially the mother uh, relating on that level, has to let go. The mother has to constantly die, has to go through a death and a rebirth. They're still a mother, but now they don't have to take care of the baby. It's a, now it's a child that can walk around on its own. And, and then the child becomes a teenager and is able to be so much more independent. But if that mother doesn't keep up with this waves, the cycles of death and rebirth, of now it's a new type of mother. It's not, can't, she can't be the same kind of mother. And then when that child is a full-grown adult and says, see you later, I have a life to live. And some mothers have a really hard time letting that happen. Some mothers you know, are much more uh, with that of, okay, now it's time to even let go of all of that. And so it's, it's a dying process all the time. But if we are afraid of death, then we're going to feel like we're, gonna, we're, we're being killed. You know? And so again, it's people who are being so overwhelmed, they're holding on to their concept of who they have to be and how they have to be, and how life has to be. So they're not willing to go with this dying process because they're afraid death is the end. But when we know, oh no, death is just a new chapter. Okay? We take our clothes off every day and, and then have new clothes on the next day, hopefully. <laughs> and, and so then when we do that, well, just because we're wearing different clothes doesn't mean were different, were any less, and it's just shedding the old and being able to incarnate in the new. Uh, so the mother continues to be a mother all throughout the child's life, even when the child is a full-grown adult and 40, 50 years old, but the relationship is completely different. And how this woman is being a mother to that child has to be completely different. So when you look at the mother as a, uh, when she had the baby, and the mother of a 50-year-old person is a different person and had to die many, many times. The ones who can't die, and this is true with any profession, uh, anything that we tend to heavily identify with, this time is a time where that's just being decimated. You know, it's the energies coming in, and if you're fighting it, it seems like a negative force. It's ruining everything. It's, you know, it's ruining the economy. It's, it's ruining our safety and, and stability in, in our society. But if you aren't resisting it, if you're welcoming it, oh, this is like fasting. It's great. I'm getting healthier. And so this is one of the things that's going to be very, very important, and especially the next couple, three years, uh, I, I have a feeling it's going to get really strong. But people have to know that that strength is power. It's not negative. Right. It's, it's purifying. Them. It's purifying. Right. It's a and good healing. Thing. It's, it's healing. Very, very healing at a very fundamental yeah, level. Yeah, right. All right. Let's maybe show the second video. Um, it's uh, again, Wa Maya Deva Mix. You know, it's beautiful. You saw the first videos with uh, Wa. It's her way of, ex you know, experiencing and, and showing love. So enjoy.
Welcome back. So that was Mahadeva Mix by Wa, beautiful. And the pictures you're seeing in between uh, Michael and I are also by Wa. Uh, this is self-portrait. This is bridging heaven and earth. And then this one is heaven on earth. Three beautiful pieces. As you can see, I mean, if you watch the shows, all different sizes, all different formats. Just the intention is love. The intention is collaboration. The intention is healing. So please join us, because the more people, like Michael was saying at the opening, that do that, it's better for them, it's better for us, it's better for the healing, and it's better for all of us collectively. So please, it's, it's a real opportunity for us all. So Michael, why don't you kind of get back into that thought, and you were going to do a meditation a yeah. little? Yeah, because I think a lot of people now are looking for tools. You know, it's, it's more and more people are becoming aware, and they're going, okay, I'm aware of this. Now what? Uh, what do I do about it? And uh, in the earlier show, we were talking about that helplessness that comes up when we don't know what to do. Well, the more aware one becomes, it's not so much of a doing as much as recognizing where we are. So I'd like to do a little oh, great. Uh, yeah, meditation wonderful. for tools for those of you who are watching. So if you'll just relax and close your eyes. Give yourselves a couple of deep breaths. And just imagine that from that space right above the tip of your tailbone, around, there's a, about an inch diameter energy center, the first chakra. Just imagine from that first chakra extending a tremendous, gigantic tree trunk or a 
post all the way to the center of the earth. And just imagine that grounding cord, that grounding post, letting all the things, the energies and problems, things that you pick up from other people and the world around you, just imagine releasing everything, just letting it all go, dropping off, and it'll go down this grounding cord. It'll go to the center of the earth and it'll recycle. That's the grounding part. The more you practice this in your day-to-day -day life, then you'll be able to manage more energy as the energy starts to raise up and people are exuding a lot of uh, fear or anger, frustration, stress, whatnot. Then you'll start to recognize, oh, that's just stuff I'm feeling around me. I can just ground it off. Now, the next part is if you'll be aware behind your eyes, just imagine being right behind your eyes in the center of your head. And again, give yourselves a couple of deep breaths and relax and centering your awareness behind your eyes. As they say, the eyes are the windows to the soul. If you're home, there's a light there. You see that in many people when you look inside to their eyes, it's really brightly lit, their home. And when you see someone who's kind of dulled out, where are they? The light has gone off somewhere. So you're bringing yourself back home, at least home in terms of where you are when you're in the incarnation with this body of yours. So be behind your eyes in the center of your head and just enjoy being there. And as you look inside the center of your head, you might notice a little bright light in there. If you do, that's you. And so just say hello, mentally just say hello to that little bright light in the center of your head. Welcome yourself as the spirit as you are, that immortal beingness, that bright light. Now, if you imagine a gigantic golden sun, imagine it full of life, full of life energy above your head, and just gently bring this gold sun into the top of your head, into your body, and just let it immerse your entire body from the top of your head to the tips of your toes and their fingertips, so that your whole body is filled with this light of this golden sun, life energy. Let it expand all the way through that body and all the way around your body. Earlier we were talking about the aura. Let it expand into your aura and even if you don't know exactly where it is around the body, let it expand into your aura to the outer edge of your aura and fill your whole space. Notice what's that, what that's like. Now, one of the things that we were talking about earlier in terms of when fear comes up or when you notice you're kind of stuck, what do I do? I, don't, I see these things happening in the world around me. I see this happening within myself, in other people. What do I do about this? I, it's unacceptable. I don't like it. It's uncomfortable. It's painful. Well, know that what is coming up? Notice what's coming up for you right now as you are in this meditation. And notice anything that's maybe uncomfortable, painful, or what you might consider to be maybe negative thoughts or feelings. Just notice that and be okay that that's that. That's the past. You're noticing what's already been there. Okay? Now, ask yourself, would you like to keep this or would you like to let it go? If you like to let it go, just decide, okay, I'm going to let it go in favor of something greater. Okay. So what is that, that where would you like to be? What kind of energy would you like to live in? Everything is energy. And so what you're feeling, what you're thinking, your thoughts, they're all energy. Your body is made of energy. Notice where you've been that you might not find it to be 
pleasant or appealing. You like to be in a different space. So just imagine that new space. Where would you like to be? What kind of energy would you like to live in? Notice the quality of that energy. Would you like to live in an energy of joyfulness, of fun, of enjoyment? Would you like to be able to laugh and experience that brilliance of life, the celebration of life? Experience that energy. Imagine that energy because what you fill yourself up with, that's what you're going to start to live in. Okay? So just letting go of the old is just one part of it. It's just like in, when you're fasting and you're detoxing, releasing all the toxins is just one part of it. If you just got rid of the toxins but you didn't nourish yourself, then you wouldn't really become healthy and whole. So as you release the old toxic negative energies, you have to nourish yourself. You have to bring in the new energy. Where would you like to be? This is a time we are moving into very rapidly. This is a time of living the miracle. We all have to learn how to live the miracle. And miracles is not boring. It's not a time of sadness and, and dread and fear and guilt. No, miracle is this brilliance. It's very joyful. It brings out the wonder like a child's wonder. Notice that energy. It's in you all the time. But with the business of the world around you and all the energy and all the fear and negativity and stuff that goes on, well, if you get caught up in that, you forget this miracle that's within you. So I'd like you to say hello to the miracle that's living inside of you right now. Notice that energy. Notice the brightness of that energy. In order to have this, you can't be worried and, and trying to figure out what's wrong with you. You have to let go of all levels of trying to figure things out, figure this out, figure that out, because to learn to live the miracle is what this shift is about. We're moving into the place of living intuitively, not living intellectually, not separating the intellect and the mind from the heart, but to live in cohesion, in unity. So in order to bring it together, we have to learn to live intuitively, to know instead of always constantly trying to figure it out. So if you'll imagine a beautiful rose out in front of you and just let go of the energy, any energy in your mind right now of trying to figure out the problem, trying to figure out why there's the pain, trying to figure out why, what to do about the economy, trying to figure out everything intellectually. Just let all that energy of trying to figure it out go into that rose. Just decide, okay, I'm going to let it go. I'm going to release it, and I'm going to put it into that rose. And watch all the energy that you've been investing in trying to figure things out. And notice what happens as you release that energy of trying to figure it out into that rose. And once that energy is in that rose, would you imagine the rose exploding, just going poof, and everything, all the energy is just disintegrating, all releasing. Give yourselves a deep breath, and notice what that's like. See if it's a little bit quieter in there. And then, now that you've released that trying to figure it out, would you just know, sit and know. Know that new space. Know that miracle energy within you. Know that awareness that you are. Look up within yourself. Look toward the higher. Look toward the greater. Look toward what is greater than how you've been living up to this point. And notice how the energy changes. As you look to the higher and you look to the greater, notice where you're going. Okay. 
we're so accustomed to going to the lower and the lesser because we try so hard to figure things out that's wrong, something that's problematic, and we, we concentrate on, I got to figure this out, I got to figure it out, and then we channel all of our awareness and energy into that which is lesser, that which is lower. But you're reversing that. You're putting your attention on that which is greater, ever greater. Each time we can put our attention on that which is within that's greater and higher, notice what happens. You're starting to let go of the limits that you've been living under and within. And as you, each time you let go even a little bit of those limits, notice how much more expansive, how much more peaceful, how much more relaxed you are. And as you are becoming aware of this, I'd like you to imagine another gigantic gold sun above your head and just start to bring that gold sun in and replenish all the new space that you've made by releasing the old limitations, letting go of pain, letting go of the separation of isolation. Those are all old things that you've already gone through a long time ago. You don't need to keep those. So replenish all that with this new energy, this new life, and notice, bring it in with celebration. Bring it in with your joy. Know the miracle within you. Just know that. Notice what happens. Experience. Be of that, like a child, in wonderment, and go, let's see what happens. This is all an experiment. Life is an experiment. If we approach it with great expectations about how everything has to be and so controlling and making it so narrow, it has to be this way, it has to turn out this way, we limit ourselves enormously. Alan was talking earlier about how much everything happens perfectly. You know, sometimes we... Uh, set certain things up a certain way, and we think that's going to be the way it's going to happen. But you might find that these days, more and more, it seems to happen, something else happens. And if you don't get hung up on that, and you can let that go, you'll surface from that next wave. And you'll see that the sun is even brighter. The day is even more joyful. Something new happens. A new opportunity is given. And you'll be there to be able to receive of that grace of new opportunity. Anyone who says, this is what's going to happen on 2012. Well, it's not going <laughs> to. If, if anyone's able to pinpoint this is what's going to happen, it's a guarantee that's not what's going to happen. Because this is an experiment in a sense of surprise. So the more we're able to Enjoy surprises. I happen to love surprise parties. It's a little hard when you're psychic. <laughs> but surprises are great. I, I go through great lengths not to peek into the Christmas presents because okay? I like to be surprised. So if you practice enjoying being surprised at what happens, this unusual thing that doesn't fit your expectation, you'll be much more prepared to receive of the grace that is starting to shower upon this earth and upon humanity now. So for a moment, I'd like you to just sit and be in a prayerful place of reception, welcoming the new, welcoming the miracle. Notice what starts to happen. Thank you, and just stretch and gently open your eyes. If you need to, you might want to bend over and drain off all the excess out of your head so, and shoulders so that you don't keep it there and see what happens in the next days to come. Thank oh, you. beautiful. <laughs> I think I'm draining. Wait, wait a minute. <laughs> I don't know where it's going, but it's draining. Yeah, I mean, you know, we were talking about this yesterday at lunch. It seems like four weeks ago now. Really? <laughs> it yeah. does, but it was only yesterday, I think. 
you know, about what a, an opportunity this time is. And so much, you know, all the new paradigms are really going to, you know, collectively bring so much opportunity and joy and, and collaborative that's, experience. I think that's one of the key words is collaboration, collaborative community. It's going to take all of us. And the time of, you know, the illusion, a good example, this being a TV show, is a good example in the media where you have a blockbuster movie and the one or two actors' names are in huge letters. And at the end, uh, when the credits roll, yeah, really 2,000 fast. names go really right. fast and they're very small right. and nobody knows who did anything. Right. Well, it's funny, uh, for years, my wife Rafiana and I, when we go to a movie, we always stay for the credits. We like to watch the credits, and, and we, we've experienced all kinds of things. We find people we know on the credits that we didn't know worked on the movie. And, but the, being able to appreciate that, wow, this movie was good, and it how many took people 2,000 people yeah. to I mean, I talk about it a lot, you know, how many people are involved in, you in know, we're show. up on this set. Exactly. And we're not a $300, $300 million movie. Oh, But how many, in, well, <laughs> it's, it's a little, they cut the budget on us uh, to we're a $200 million show. And, and it looks it, it's got all the production values of that. Uh, but, you know, how many people are involved in that? I exactly. Mean, it's, it's really an amazement. And, it's and actually, we're doing something with that uh, uh, time-lapse photography that we're going to show at a future show to see all the things getting set up and broken down. It's what it be takes to, to put on right, this, this show. little show. Yeah. With, yeah, it's amazing. So we got about a minute left, 30 seconds, go. <laughs> you haven't said enough yet. So we give you another 30 seconds. This is what happens when we decide to have a show on silence. And, 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 and we, we talked the whole time. For two hours. Two, uh, two. Right. And we need a third one, someone was saying. Yes. Well, laugh. Enjoy. Enjoy. Because when you're laughing, you can't hold on. Right. You can't be angry, hold on to anger, and laugh. You can't hold on to hatred and laugh. Laughing is the first step to forgiveness. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, so really, if anyone, any information about Michael, go to, go to you know, YouTube, Bridging Heaven and Earth with Michael tomorrow. There are a lot of shows, a lot of healings, a lot of different types of healings, a lot of different types of grounding. If you want any information about Michael, the art project, call me, Alan, 805-687-2053, 805-687-2053. Really, all these things are an opportunity for us. So let's really take them. Let's be part of the art project. Let's be part of this healing. Let's just do it. Together we can. Good night. God bless you. Thank you.